Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 219. The road to hell is paved with works in progress. Philip Roth. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my Indie Film Hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's episode is brought to you by Black Box. Black Box is a new platform and community that is all about financial freedom for filmmakers like you. If you join Black Box, you will be transformed from being a worker to being a maker of your own content. And you'll be making steady passive income from the global market. Black Box currently allows you to upload your stock footage once, get it to many global agencies, and then allows you to share that passive income stream with your collaborators. Whether you want to submit old footage that's been sitting around in your hard drives or create brand new content, Black Box is for you. It's really quite revolutionary. With Black Box, filmmakers can concentrate on making great content while Black Box takes care of all the business BS. Just visit www.blackbox.global to find out more. Today's show is also sponsored by AmazingMusicTracks.com. Amazing Music Tracks is an online licensing platform that offers production music created by award-winning Hollywood film composers. Their composers are responsible for music behind feature film hits like Easy A and Legion, trailers including Guardians of the Galaxy and The Hobbit, and much more. What's awesome about this service is that you only pay a one-time fee and you can use the music on unlimited film projects in perpetuity. Over the next couple weeks, AmazingMusicTracks.com is offering a subscription model that can receive up to 70% off each music track. Trust me, if you do a lot of film production, you should definitely take advantage of this opportunity. So head over to AmazingMusicTracks.com. Now, while I was at the Sundance Film Festival this year, I had an amazing opportunity to meet so many different industry leaders uh, working in independent film today. And today's guest is one of those people. Tiffany Boyle from Romo Law is a packaging expert. What she does is help independent filmmakers put together packages to attract producers, to attract investors, to attract high-end talent, uh, distribution, everything. And she's able to understand the marketplace and kind of just structure uh, projects in a way that gives them the best opportunity to succeed. And I never had anyone like this on the show, so I really wanted to dig in and see exactly what she's doing and how she's doing it. So she Gave us a lot of her secrets in this uh, in this interview, and I'm very excited to bring it to you guys. So, without any further ado, here is my interview with Tiffany Boyle. I'd like to welcome the show, Tiffany Boyle. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I hear your voice is very Sundancey. Yeah, you know it's that time of Sundance where everybody can't speak. Yes, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I don't have the very white generally. <laughs> so, um, so tell me, how did you get into business in the first place? Uh, I, I grew up, I always wanted to be in the film industry, mm-hmm. um, and so I knew I wanted to since high school, and came out to LMU for film school, mm-hmm. and then uh, luckily found a job immediately after in foreign sales world, and continued from there. So you, what, like how you got in early in foreign sales? Yeah, I, I was right out of college. Oh, great. So, yeah. I mean, that's a yeah. heck of a, foreign sales is a very um, educational yeah, I didn't ah. even know. I, <laughs> film school doesn't teach you about no, foreign sales. No, no, not so sales. much. Um, so I didn't know it existed. So it was very, uh, it was an extra, um, I was paid to learn about it at So you're a lot of AFMs, a lot of CAN. Yeah. <laughs> I met my husband at AFM. Oh, really? Yeah. Very cool. So what are you doing now? Uh, now I work at Ramo Law, which is an entertainment law firm. Um, and we represent mostly producers, financiers, and a handful of writers. And you do sales and packaging. Yeah, I'm not an attorney. Right. Uh I, I run the packaging and sales arm of the firm, which really helps clients develop business-oriented packaging. And So business-oriented packaging, can you define that yes. for everyone? Uh, I'm not going to help you get Brad Pitt attached to your movie. What? It's more about finding uh, the right producing partners, um, co-fi partners, EPs, and then um, sometimes it's earlier. Most of the time it's post-filming, uh, but also figuring out your sales agent and distribution. So what's the process? Of, let's say I'm a filmmaker. I've got a nice. I have a script. Obviously, it's an Oscar-winning script. Uh, it's an Oscar. Uh, it's a, a great script. Um, what's the process? How does how does someone even go down the path to work with you? Yeah, it. I've had people come to me with just a clean script, and I've had people come to me with completed films looking for distribution. So I really can look at content in any 
in and all of those phases. So let's say, um, let's say with screenplay, let's take yeah, that, just that screenplay part. only. Typically, it's me looking at the script first, um, seeing if it's something that I feel I can even push forward, mm -hmm. and from there having a, a open discussion about like what their expectations are versus what I can really do right, with it. it. Right, got it. Uh, and clean scripts really, it's about finding the producer first. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really, you know, they're the backbone of getting a film made. And so I really focus on finding producers, production companies. And once that comes in, I kind of act almost in like an EP role mm -hmm. where while the producer is helping push it forward, I'm uh, kind of surrounding it and then You're the pinging in as needed. Yeah. You're moving the pieces to try to help get the whole yeah. thing made. Yeah. And, uh, and then when someone has a full movie, what are they, what's the process there? Uh, I take a look at the screener mm -hmm. and we have another frank discussion. <laughs> About. Can, can we discuss? Let's let's just talk about the frank discussions because I think it's something that isn't taught into film school. Yeah. There is a lot of uh, the illusions of grandeur. Yes, and there's a lot of uh, expectations. Yes, uh, because it's your baby. You know, yeah. it's I've worked two years on this script, or I worked two years on this movie. Um, it's something that I've run into a lot in my in doing what I do. Um, how do you have that conversation with filmmakers? And and. Can you give a good example and a bad example of after that conversation with no names? Yeah. Um, it, I tend to be uh, a bit more on the frank side, which, uh, which you know be. can be frustrating for specific potential clients. Um, but I'd rather uh, be honest and open about it up front than right. um, promise and not be able to deliver on it. Right. So, you know, I've, I've had... I've had, I have one client right now. I'm working on um, an $11 million film um, that just unfortunately doesn't have enough cast, but it's, it's really well shot. It's well done. And, and it's finished. It's finished. And, um, you know, he, I've been super upfront with him about how because of the cast, it's been hard and he still really believes in the movie, but he just takes me telling him what I need. And he, he's one of those guys who just kind of understands and is okay with the fact that like he, he'll put in p &A if he has to do later, but he, he's um, okay with my bluntness. Right. And uh, in LA, that's actually quite appreciated. It's in, in the right hands. If, yeah, if, if it's the right kind of person who's been down that path and who's been like, I guess, um, mishandled in the past. Yes. Uh, in LA, you know, they tend to appreciate more <laughs> when you just say it how it is, and if it turns out better, great. Great. But at least you know, I'm I'm kind of giving you the conservative. This is what I think the outcome will look like, and there have been some that have said. You know, like I've read scripts and given them feedback, and they get very upset. You don't and, know what you don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and uh, you're just you know, a sales and packaging. Yeah, person. and you don't I, know about art. My answer is always, well, you know, this is how I feel, and you know, you are obviously entitled to your opinion, and you know, I'm always here to kind of read a new draft if you're ready. But good, good luck. You're very sweet about it, though. Even just while you're talking about it, I try. You're, you're trying to be. You're kind. I could get that that energy coming from you. You're kind about it. Like, look, it's not going to work out. You know, it's kind yeah. of like I have a $20 million budget and I have no stars and it's black and white. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not going to get into any festivals. And all of a sudden I'm like, I need, I need you to sell this for me. Yeah. And look, I would love for you to prove me wrong. Please prove God, me wrong. Would that be I would love that. <laughs> but this is what I'm seeing. I, you know, we work, the firm works on 90 films a year. So I, I'm, I'm in, I track all of them and I, and I watch the reports coming back from all of them and mm -hmm. I have a good sense of what's selling where, why, how. And so um, it's not an uneducated uh, response. Right. And so when you're packaging, let's say for a screenplay, um, let's say we've gone past it's a good screenplay. Um, and then at that point uh, you say, okay, look, we think if this has legs, we can really think we could do something with this. And all the, all the stars are aligning. Um, at that point, do you go, okay, we need to hire, we need to, attach a good producer yeah. on it. Once that producer comes on, then that will attract certain talent based yes. on the producer. Uh, the director, when does the director come in? Usually it depends on the producer's viewpoint at that point. Um, I find some producers really have great direct relationships and they go that route first versus mm -hmm. others that have more financing relationships and they go that route first. Mm -hmm. um, or or it's really all at once. It's, it's a crap. You yeah, know, it's, it's a crap. There's no right way to make right. a movie of course, of or, or TV. Um, so uh, I have, for example, like I have one project where I brought in um, a producer who's had some films that have been nominated for Oscars in the past. And um, she immediately brought in a really quality female director. Mm -hmm. And um, then I've had, I have another one where we brought in the producer and then I, they've been kind of having a hard time finding the right people for it. So I brought it to an investor and now he's coming in and bring in people. There's just mm -hmm. there's, no, there's a million ways to make that cake. Yeah. Without question. And then, uh, as far as distribution is concerned, and you have how what's the process that you do? You find a producer's rep, 
that yes. can help. So can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah, if it's, I always gauge again the expectations of the client. Sometimes it's also about, did we do production legal on it or was this somebody that just kind of found us later? Mm-hmm. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Um, and if we do production legal on it, we'll typically be more involved in helping them find d- the distribution directly. But if it's something that gets into like Sundance or you know one of the bigger festivals, I, I really go through the path of trying to find the rep, either one of the agencies, um, Circus Road, Submarine, mm-hmm. those types of companies. Got you. And then every film has a different path in distribution. Some can go one way, some can go other, depending on star quality. How do you do you at that point once it's in the producer rep's hands, you kind of just I'm out? No. Okay. <laughs> usually usually um I'm also hired on to help track reporting and financing mm-hmm. coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh distributors and sales agents. Not all of them, but some of them can so, be a little sneaky. What? So um, distributors being sneaky? That so yeah. is that is a that is a exclusive here I on know, the show. I know. <laughs> uh so uh, I tend to Track the reporting, make sure it looks good, ask the right questions to distributors about what what is this manufacturing cost exceeding what we have oh, so in the agreement. Going, and so you're going through it and you're Yeah, you're I compare it to the deal and, and make sure that they're yeah, keeping keep keep it keeping them honest. Yeah. Because there's I'm a lot really of, sorry. No, no worries. No, please drink, please. <clears throat> um you know, that good stuff. Uh yeah. so then yes, because I've had a lot of experience with distributors as well. Um, you know, so that all of a sudden a poster costs twenty thousand dollars. I'm like, what? yeah, that's... which it can depending on. Who well, who yes, used but to if, that. but if your movie costs twenty thousand, <coughs> <coughs> correct. <laughs> what kind yeah. of budget ranges do you work with? And does it um, do you work like a micro budget film? Yeah, with a proper you know festival or something like that. Yeah, um, at, we, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Go ahead. <coughs> <coughs> yes, uh, we work on micro budget, all the way up to we've worked on thirty to forty million movies. Mm-hmm. I tend to. Not go that high because at that point, it's usually just studio and you're never, it's, there's no point. Yeah, right. um, but usually up to 15 to 20 is what and I And what's the low? 50. 50 grand, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's, and that, that's amazing. That's really good. So that gives hope to filmmakers listening out there like, look, you have a $50,000 movie that actually yeah. can actually go somewhere. Yeah. We have uh, 14 films in the festival that the firm worked on. One of them um, was. It'll be a little bit more once they do finishing costs, but it was made for fifty grand to get into the festival. That's amazing. That's yeah. great. And does it really fulfill you, like when you see a movie go get successful and go all the way through? Yeah, it's so cool, and it's so cool to watch the trajectory of, um, you know, clients you've worked with and how they're growing and the cool things they get to do after that. Now, can you talk a little bit about? Um, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna harp, harp on this a little bit. Expectations for filmmakers out there right now listening to the podcast or right. watching this about what they can expect. Cause I, I mean, I, I, I consult with clients all the time and you know, half million dollar, million dollar movies with no stars in it. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I just don't think you can recoup your money. Yeah. Though. That's a, con- that's I a have hard- to have that very tough conversation yeah. on the daily. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're like the executioner, but, but, but very kind about uh, you it. You know, that, and, and, and some news. people, listen to what I have to say and some people kind of tune it out and that's their sure. prerogative. Sure. Um, I can't listen. I just spent a million dollars. I can't listen. And to I get, I get it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, you know, but uh, I often, and I will say, you know, I, I think distribution right now is kind of like the wild west. Oh, I say, I tell my clients that all the time. It's the it wild is. west. Like I can give you my estimates. I can give you my thoughts about what this is going to look like, but no, even distributors don't even know what they want right they have now. No idea. Um, and they don't, and they're a little all over the place in how they make offers and why they make offers and what they're doing with it. And um, so I, I, I can be as honest as I can about it. But at the end of the day, I don't control what distributors are right, exactly. putting offers on. Now, can you you saw, said about certain talent being touched? Can you please kind of give us a guideline? I'm like, if you have a movie that's fifty thousand dollars, you can be a little sure. more experimental. Yes. Question. Yeah. At what point do you have to, as a being physically responsible to the investors, go look? This is not an art project anymore. You are now in a in a point that hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Like you've got to have somebody that's going to sell. If not, you know you're rolling the dice that you get into Sundance, win Sundance. Like now, this is a lottery ticket mentality. Yeah. 
where what's the threshold in your opinion like at, at certain point like if you don't have someone attached the movie is it could be the best thing in the world but if it doesn't get the attention you're not going to make your money back what's the threshold in your opinion i'd say it's probably a couple hundred grand um but there are factors to it of where if it is the best thing in the world it will find it its will way. find its way but it is a lot the, about story more it's lottery more. ticket kind it's of still a lottery ticket it's, yeah. it is more risky yes but you know, it is very execution dependent. And if you really can deliver, mm-hmm. you'll do well. But um, like the $50,000 one that we have here, they did a really great job with it. But, um, you know, I think if you're going to try to mitigate your risk, it's probably a couple hundred grand. So at that point, you're like, look, you got to put someone in there. Yeah. So we need we need Nick Cage, basically Nick Cage. And Not at a couple no, hundred grand. <laughs> you can't even get him to show up for less than that. Yeah, <laughs> unless he's like doing it for his son or something. Right, I don't know. exactly. But, for a um, comic book collection. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the point. But I think. yeah, and that's where you use sales agents and other you know people who've been in the industry a long time that have been in the sales world mm-hmm. um, to really help you say, here's some cast that I'm running against this budget. What is that going to look like in terms of my recruitment? Mm-hmm. Um, because that's going to be key. And you might think based upon IMDb oh, no. m- meter rating mm, that, that you know, the number three person Maybe. is going to be great, but uh, that's right. not how w- it really works in terms of what distributors and uh, foreign buyers are looking for. Absolutely. Someone could be extremely popular here in the States, be nothing overseas, and not yeah. be popular here, and yeah. be on a TV show and sell territories like water over there. Correct. David Hasselhoff. Uh, <laughs> Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal, Jean Claude Van Damme, who they sell every year. They're making money. Um, I did, was that were you at AFM this year? Yeah. Did you see the poster, which was uh, Steven Seagal versus Mike Tyson? The most AFME movie ever. <laughs> it literally was Steven Seagal versus. So that you know is going to sell everywhere overseas because of who's attached. Now the one thing I, I find with with the filmmaker as well is they mix the art with the business, yeah. and they don't know how to under they don't understand the that you have to mix the other. Yeah. So like when you're saying, oh, I have a cast list here. What does that mean for my recruitment? But I really want to hire this actor who's never done anything or has never been in anything. She's perfect for the role. He's perfect for the role. I'm like, yeah, that's great. For, you want to do that, but you're not going to sell. That's such a difficult conversation to have. Yeah. It? You, you really have a tough job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you. You know, you hold it well, but you do have a tough job having to, you're constantly breaking bad news. I kind of am. <laughs> Because you're the realist. You got, I gotta say, like, thanks for bringing that to my attention. <laughs> but the point is that you're the, the thing is you, you obviously do a lot of good news as well. But you, you you're the realist because you've been you've been in the game a long time. Like, look, I've seen this a hundred times, thousand yeah. times. If you don't do this, this is going to happen. This script's not going to work. That's just my opinion. Of being yeah, in the business so long. take it or I'm leave not, it. I'm not perfect. Some people listen to me. Some people don't. I'm not perfect. Yeah. You know. So if you have um, any advice for filmmakers out there, so one with um, a script trying to get uh, some sort of attention. Uh, do you, by the way, if someone approaches you with a script, I'm assuming you don't take any script off the street. There has to be a conversation. There has to be a, you have to retain you guys to do. Yeah, something. there has to be a conversation, and there is a world in which like we'll read a script, but you got to pay me to read it. Of course, no, that's no, of course, um, because if not, you. But then there's other it. things sometimes where like I'll waive a fee or, um, you know, if it's got kind of the right momentum or people behind it, or I've worked with you before sure, and we have a really great relationship. Um, that, yeah, there's that trust factor there. Sure. But as, as far as distribution is going, what advice can you give somebody out there with that, you know, half million dollar movie with, you know, maybe a few TV stars or something like that in it? You're going to struggle with a half million dollar movie with some maybe TV stars right now. Unfortunately, it wasn't even that way like a year or two ago. Right. Um, it, At least especially, they have the TV stars. At least yeah. Also, they, I mean, and it's going to depend on the genre and the, and obviously the execution. But mm-hmm. um, if, if it's a bit more genre, you might be in a little bit better position. But no, if, can you talk about that? Genre, def- what are the genres that are actually selling much better? I know the answer, but what do you, in your <clears> opinion? Um, I mean, thrillers. If you can make an action film at 500 grand, which actually my husband does here and there, sure. and like they They're sell, great. oh hell yeah, um, you know, so action films, um, sci-fi. If it doesn't look cheesy, it's a really tough to do a sci-fi. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, and then yeah, family can do well. It's just about how it translates Overs- to the rest of the world, right? Um, 
you know, like a foreign sales agent will be very happy with that family, but it's about like how you recoup Mm -hmm. and you may not be able to see all of that money back. Right. It's, it's, it's a miracle that anyone ever makes movies or gets paid to make movies. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. (laughs) We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Now, what advice, um, uh, I'm going to ask you a few questions and ask all my guests. Uh, first of all, what is the lesson that took you the longest to learn, whether in the film business or in life? Oh, oh yeah. Gosh. It's, it's got deep. It got deep. Um, I think it's not worrying, and I'm still working on it. Okay. Uh, I tend to, like, focus too much on um, kind of the little things adding up and don't see the big picture sometimes Mm -hmm. and worrying about that. And and that's, that goes for my job and in my personal life. And so I think that that's something I've learned over the years and then still focusing on and not being too uh, anxious about it. You know, life is what it is sometimes. Go, Things happen the, the way, way yeah. It's just kind of go they the happen flow. the way they need to sometimes. Um, what advice would you give a filmmaker just starting out in the business? My advice is to really, number one, make sure you have good content. Uh, you know, getting the right feedback from the right people, sending it out, getting reviews, getting coverage, working on your craft, taking notes. Uh, not everyone's going to give you the best notes, but being gracious when somebody has read your script and and uh, accepting the feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also it's networking. I, I think networking is so important uh, and not used enough, especially because I know writers tend to like to just write. They don't want to go out there and do it. But we're not in a world <laughs> anymore where, um, you know, agents are just finding you off the street. Mm-hmm. That you got to really put yourself out there and go to those functions and meet people and develop the relationships and almost be your own producer until you get that one. And um, what are three of your favorite films of all time? I'm from Utah, so <laughs> I love Salt Lake City, SLC Punk. Okay. It's yes. one of my favorite films of all time. Uh, and then like John Hughes movies. like oh, Breakfast um, Club. Breakfast Six, Club. Yeah. Which is your favorite John Hughes movie? Can you name this? Uh, Breakfast Club. Perfect. And then I love like, I love Grounded Sci-Fi. So like, I love like Eye Origins and another those types of things. Very cool. Well, yeah. Tiffany, thank you so much for doing this. Thank show. you for having me. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you for listening to me. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much. I hope you guys picked up some tips and tricks on how to package your uh, film and your project to attract producers, uh, investors, and higher end talent that will help you get your film made. So, thank you again to Tiffany and Romo Law. And I will have all of her links and information uh, and contact info in our show notes at anyfilmhustle.com forward slash 219. Guys, again, thank you. I know February has been a little rough for me in the podcast. I am doing the best I can. Uh, when I release the information about my top secret project, you will understand why it's been so rough for me. Um, but it, I can't wait. I'm just, just jonesing to tell you guys what I've been up to. It is going to be um, explosive to say the least. So I can't wait to share it with you guys. So just hang in with me for a couple more weeks. March will start rocking uh, our normal, regularly scheduled programming. Uh, but thank you again for your patience. And as always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.